is an IDE that's entirely web-based. And that means that you can import your code from Bitbucket and GitHub really easily, and you can run and debug your Node.js applications. You can also deploy them to, we have up to, we have four partners now that you can deploy your code to. And uh, like I said, we use Node.js entirely on the back end. Node.js is great because, oh, well, this is what it looks like, first of all. So this is uh, entirely browser-based, and um, I'll demo this in a second, and you can kind of see. I'm throwing out most of my talk because this is just a utility thing. You can walk away with this. If you have never tried Node before, you can use this and just start running and debugging your Node.js apps right away, and it's really cool. Um, so like I said, C9 is a, is a completely web-based IDE, and, uh, and What's, what, the reason why we chose Node.js is because we realized that as a platform choice, uh, it could handle concurrently thousands of users, potentially, uh, in one single server. And when you're building an application like Cloud9, where a lot of users are connecting, they want to run and debug Node.js applications, they're cloning repos, they're deploying, and things like that, you really want the ability to do all of those operations at once, but never block any single user. At the same time, you also want to be sending messages bidirectionally with users and have them being able to communicate the server in a non-blocking way. And for Node.js, that is an effortless choice to make. Um, once you start working on Node.js, you start to realize that Node.js enables concurrency. And uh, Michael told me that he hates this line, but <laughs> Michael also talked crap about my uh, coworker, Tim Caswell. So. <laughs> it, uh, to take that with a grain of salt. Um, actually, to be honest, uh, Michael wrote a blog post on, on his kind of thoughts on Python and the history of this mental model of trying to do things concurrently. And I mean, you could probably, sorry, you could probably explain it better than I could, but uh, when you start working in Node.js, you start to realize that the things that you want to do to interact with the user who's interacting with your application becomes much easier to understand when you have things like callbacks. So if you're reading a file and you want to send that to a user, you only do that when the file is done reading. And in the meantime, while the operating system is taking care of loading in the file and sending that information to Node.js, and Node.js is, is handling all that, another user could be doing a separate request, and their request is non-blocking. So anyway, I just want to hammer on that point. If there's one thing you walk away from today, the reason why you would new, use Node.js is if you want to engage your users and allow them to use all parts of your application concurrently without blocking any one of them. It's not to say that there might be pause and wait and load times and things like that when you have a, a lot of load, but compared to other frameworks that you're used to, and a lot of people hear from Java and PHP, it makes a lot more sense when you start working with it. So um, I'm going to go and show you a little bit about what it's like to work with uh, Cloud9. And uh, if you guys want, you guys have Wi-Fi on, you can participate in this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to show you what it's like to just run an application. So I, I happen to clone this in. Let me see if I can. Uh, hopefully the Wi-Fi behaves. So on the Chrome Web Store, we actually have Oh, did that not work? Oh, because I'm not signing to GitHub. This didn't work. Here we go. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah, so we have a, an extension for Chrome that's an Edit in Cloud9 button, and it injects it into every project page that you look at on GitHub. And you can just click on it, and it'll literally just import the entire repository into your Cloud9 account. And so uh, that's what I did here. and. Uh, you immediately get the project files listing on that stuff. And server.js is the JavaScript entry point for this application. This is the no chat example that Ryan Dahl wrote. And if I click on debug here, it'll spit out some information at the bottom, like a URL that I can use to access the running process. So if I click on that, um, this is the application. So within a few seconds, I got this up and running. And so you guys can actually access this URL. This is a public project on Cloud9. So for a running process, anybody can access this. Let me see, can I zoom in? It's node underscore chat 
.msp underscore dev dot c9 dot io. And I'll show you in a second what it's like to debug, to debug on Cloud9 when some of you start to join. Okay, cool. All right, good deal. So I talked about concurrency earlier. In this application, there's a console.log statement that's logging every request and all the things, all the resources that are being loaded. And it's spitting it back out just in regular console.log statements. If you're running this on your home computer, on your desktop, your laptop, or whatever, you would see this output in your terminal. But what Cloud9 does is it has a, it's watching the process that's running and all the things that are coming to the standard output get sent back to your browser through Socket.io. And this is, I'm sure that there's about 250 people you know, working on Cloud9 right now. The same thing is happening for them. So it's managing all those processes concurrently. And it's, there's no lag, so it's, it's pretty incredible. So, um, <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm gonna go here to the join. So this is, uh, sees that there's a, a join request and this is what happens when you enter your name and hit, hit enter. And I'm gonna put a breakpoint right here. And if one of you could just refresh your browser or something like that, I don't know if it actually keeps the active state. There we go, okay, somebody logged in. So it hit the breakpoint on this Node.js application and whoever did that is currently paused in the loading state you did. So it'll say, it says loading on the page, right? Okay, so we can actually look um, at the property. So it says that your nickname is Barry. Hi, Barry. <laughs> we can see all the variables listed here. We can see all this information as it's coming in. And we can step through. And then, so this is used the, um, query string or whatever that uh, module is to parse out his nick from the URL that was sent in the join message. And we can hover over this and see that nick is said to Barry, right? As soon as I press play here, Barry will be joined in. So on your screen it should be popped up or if not it might, looks like a lot of you refreshed your screen so it continues to hit the breakpoints. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's just a brief introduction to how debugging works on Cloud9. And um, I'm just gonna step through here real fast. Uh, there's a lot of amazing stuff that we do, but I don't wanna take up all your guys' time. Uh, you can do NPM work, like Michael was showing you earlier. So you can install uh, NPM install request. And it'll take a second, it has to load up all the resources and all that stuff, but it'll actually install it and if you refresh here, you can see that the node module is actually there. And then in your code, you can do, you know, require request or whatever. Uh, we also have, we also have code completion, right? So it's not active like Visual Studio, but it's pretty quick and you just have to press alt space to get to it. And um, so, Matt Harrington was earlier talking about deployment and, oh, I know why it's going slow, the screen recording. Uh, you can deploy to Windows Azure right from Cloud9. So it's effortless. You just type in your credentials, create a new instance wherever you want to deploy it to, you know, your data center and number of instances and stuff like that. Create the deployment. It'll ask you how much RAM you want to use, things like that, and you can deploy it really easily. Um, so we've had a lot of experience developing Cloud9. Over the past year and a half, we debuted it in October of 2010. It's grown a lot since then. Um, I have to say that since I joined Cloud9 last year, coding in one language on both the back end and the front end is really incredible. If you're thinking about using Node.js uh, for any component in your architecture, um, a lot of developers already know JavaScript and it's really just a nice thing to use it. The only caveat is that if you're developing a sophisticated application like Cloud9 that uses a heavy client-side rich uh, library, you really wanna do your research on the best one to use because it's gonna save you boatloads of time down the road. Um, we used APF, which is a client, rich client library that we developed back in 2000, starting in 2005. And uh, it never made it to commercial release. In fact, the company realized that it was gonna go under, so we decided to build Cloud9 instead. 
uh, because you can't really sell a client library. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of incomplete, which is not to say that it's a bad library. It's great now that it's the patches have been filled in. But um, you know, people kind of who hawing about Backbone and all these other things that are coming out. You really want to do your research, and I don't really know the best one because I used APF exclusively for the for the past year. Um, but in that process, you want to ask a lot of questions. The JavaScript community is amazing. Michael's a good example of that. There's a lot of people in Oakland and all the people who are working on Node.js, they, Oakland? <laughs> um, they are extremely generous with their time, very receptive, very smart people. And, uh, you know, Ryan Dahl basically didn't necessarily invent this new paradigm of thinking about this, but he certainly saw the light on it. And uh, this, this new community is, is very self-aware of, of what it means to have a community of developers that are helping each other out. That's one of the reasons why this association with Microsoft is, is working out really well, this partnership with Microsoft that they uh, add, added Windows support to a node last year. And um, it's no coincidence to me, because I've been working in the node community, everybody's been amazing. And um, the only other thing I would say is that a hard lesson that we learned at Cloud9 was we had this really high expectation that Node.js was going to perform on every level. And we also kind of knew we were going into uncharted territory. But um, when things started to not work, we started to get hundreds and thousands of users using Cloud9 concurrently. And we started to see that there were memory issues. And uh, Node.js is like any other language you've ever used. And there's going to be failure points along the way. But it is a fledgling community that's getting stronger and learning a lot of lessons. And, um, but yeah, you have to be kind of ready to, to fail with JavaScript and Node.js in particular, because wrapping your mind around this callback idea and other things that you're doing is, can be a little difficult. But um, like I said, everyone's always there to help in Node.js especially. And um, I was going to go into the break your app into scalable pieces thing, but that's really more of an architectural lesson that you learn along the way. It could be a whole other talk. So um, yeah, that's it. Check out Cloud9 at c9.io. And you can get running with your Node.js uh, Node application right away. And that's it. <laughs>